Hello and welcome to Mars. We are going to build yet another furnace. You see, Radamant recently did an Europa playthrough where he never made an advanced furnace. And the reason he gave for this is that he didn't want to deal with integrated circuits live on stream. Well, that got me thinking and with a little inspiration from a guy called Rev26 on the Station Edge Discord, we are making a fairly good furnace setup with absolutely no codes, only a few logic ships. And this is everything we'll need for the entire build. And this setup will work equally well on a regular furnace as well as an advanced furnace with very minimal changes between them. And I'll start by building the setup with the regular furnace and then we'll do the upgrade to the advanced furnace and you can see the small differences. So uh, what we have here is just a creative world where I can um, where we can build and I have a frame here where which is going to hold our furnace. So it's going to be sitting right in here and the patch that goes into it is uh, logic memory. I have five here, I think we'll only use four and we have six logic processors and six logic IOs. We have four pipe valves, we have four volume pumps, we have an atmospheric kit, we have our furnaces and one insulated tank. We have some different colored pipes, cable, and if you're on a, a, a world with at an atmosphere, then you can also use an activant. So, uh, yeah, I guess we just start. Um, so before I put in the furnace, we'll do some of the pipings, and uh, you are going to recognize this fairly soon, I'm hoping. Uh, it does look a lot like, uh, if you have seen my furnace setup, the piping back here will look very similar. So, uh, let's see, and something like that. This is for our waste. These are the connectors to the furnace, and uh, if you are just using the regular furnace, these can be in any orientation you want, but if you are planning on using it for an advanced furnace, they kind of have to be sitting like this, and we'll get, uh, it will make more sense as we go along. Um, let's see, that's our waste tank. We need uh, some pipes, let's see. Let's start with placing our atmospherics. Uh, so we want an air conditioner back here. Let's do it like that. And then we can bring along the valves and the blue pipes. So. We want the blue pipe to just go, uh, just have a one segment here, and then just a regular valve on that, and we'll leave it open. This valve is simply to make two separate uh, pipe networks. So we just pipe that over to here, and then here we put a one-way valve. And now I'm pointing it into the from waste into cold, but it can go the other way around. Will depend on where you have most of your source. Let's see. This pipe needs to continue, and it should go all the way up and meet this connection point right here. So in here we're going to have a volume pump, but we are pretty much done with the blue line as of now. Uh, let's see, let's do the red line and we need to do the same uh, trick here with the, with the AC. Like that, this should add up to 1, 2, 3, 4, 
five pipe segments and again uh, just a normal valve and you can keep it open it's simply there to split the pipe network up so let's do the same connection here and for this one we again want a one-way valve uh, this one should probably be uh, always from waste to to uh, hot gas so it should be pointing this way and then we just continue it up to meet this point here there we go and then we have our volume pumps we have four volume pumps here and they you have three going into this uh, four way here so we do a volume pump like this yeah and one going in like that so it's pointing into the four way and then the last one doing the same pointing into the four way the last volume pump goes up here and we need to have it go out so that's gonna be a tricky to see but you see that one goes uh, out from the furnace and into the waste tank right so there's pretty much that uh, we need to label some of it I don't have a labeler and a battery let's see so we have these volume pumps we need to name them so that we know uh, we can refer to them later when we set up the logic uh, we'll just call them volume pump heat volume pump waste in volume pump waste out and volume pump cooled so let's see and then we can set up the furnace and you can see the arrows on the back there uh, we need to line that up so that it's correct with the so no that's wrong that's out in on top and out on bottom we want the opposite so we want this orientation and there we go now it should say input and output that's correct and there we have it uh, we need some shoots we didn't add that to the list but uh, the input and output up here is kind of awkward but if you just sh shoot it out then and that's input so this is outlet let's see corner and uh, straight and uh, corner and uh, inlet you can obviously put the shoots however you like it so that's pretty much it we need to do the cables so we have the cables over here uh, I already have a power just an RTG for the purposes of the video so you just connect all this to the same network with power something like that and we also need the data port on the furnace and the, that's all the way up here so let's see if we can find a path out yeah we'll go over here so the reason for the 
The reason this is inside a frame is just to make it easier for us so that uh, we don't have to deal with uh, potential explosion hazard. There we go. And that's everything connected. <coughs> now the now we need to fill this uh, pipe networks here with some gases and uh, because they are currently completely empty there is nothing in none of them so if you are on a world like Mars or Europa for example then you can fill some of uh, like your cold side with some atmospherics some atmosphere gas, let's see. If you are on Vulcan or Venus, then you, you would do the same, except of course you set the active event on the red side. So, we can turn this on. And it's now filling up some gases for us, already pretty cold, uh, but even if you are like on a moon or something, you don't need the active vent, it's just to speed things up a bit. Uh, the next step is to get some actual hot gases in there, and uh, like I said, if you're on Vulcan or Venus, you can get some atmosphere. If you're not on those planets, then doing some uh, ISIS, so we do... I just need to get me some volatiles and some oxide. Let's see. Yeah. And then we do um, half a stack of volatiles. And let's see, split half. I'm just gonna stick these in here and split half. And about a quarter stack of uh, oxide, and we just hammer it until it uh, starts until it starts combusting. Here we go. That's about forty MPa. So we just take our output pump. If I can get up there. the jetpack I guess. Uh, we just start turn that on and we can hammer it up to 100 liters. And the reason we do this and not just use atmospheric gas is because if you would fill the entire system with just Martian nighttime atmosphere it uh, you will have a very 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 limited amount of uh, energy in the system. So you need both, of course, a uh, lot of moles and a lot of energy. So, let's see. We have to wait for this to get somewhat down in pressure before we toss in a new stack. Uh, while we do that, we can set all of these pumps on and to zero volume. So we just set zero volume and on and zero volume and on and we can set the uh, atmospherics the AC just set it to negative 200 and turn it on and this guy can just sit and run forever so you don't have to think about that and uh, let's see yeah it's more or less empty now I guess so we just turn off the pump for a second and then we toss in another 25 volatiles and 13 oxides and we get another nice pressurization and we empty that back out again. So this system runs on the same, pretty much the same system as my other furnace. Uh, you 
have three inputs. You have the hot, the cold, and the waste. And of course, here I'm doing something very simple. We are generating hot and cold side by just using a single AC. If you have another way to do it, uh, something other way of cooling stuff and heating stuff, then be my guest, do whatever you want with uh, this part of the solution. Um, the only thing important is that it's something cold and something hot and a waste tank. And also keep in mind that, you know, okay, this hot side is currently 1600 degrees, that's very good. But if this uh, if the temperature here goes down, then uh, like the the logic here we'll, we're going to set up now is very simple. So it wouldn't know that the temperature is either high or low or whatever. But yeah, the furnace is more or less empty. We have done uh, two good uh, firings here, so it should be plenty of gas in here. Ten MPa. 8 and uh, these should be about the same 8 yeah. uh, we can turn that off so we have already 10 MPa in here uh, 8 and 8 yeah that's good numbers and if you look at the temperature it's going very slow down here uh, but it's also going up on the red side so, uh, you can see it's not terribly fast but <coughs> if you get this running soon like early game and then just go about your business this will work up a very good buffer on both the cold and the hot side so now that all of these are done we can just close up the frame and start with the logic and let's see we need to start with the io so we need a reader uh, let's see. Uh, yeah. Let's uh, put it this way and a memory. Uh, and then we need three processors and we are doing math on all of them. So we have a, a math unit, a math unit and a math unit. And then we have another memory on, let's see, on this one, on this one, on the, on the th second and third. We need another memory. And then we need two more uh, logic writers. <clears throat> and you can see we still have more IOs. That's because this is only half of it We are going to duplicate one more because we have one of these for pressure and a nearly identical one for temperature So all we need to do now is just to cable all of this together and I'm not going to do anything fancy. I like to just Simply surround them with cables And there we have it. Uh, I have cabled up all the logic here and we'll go through how to set it up. As I said, this is just half of it, but the other half are pretty much identical. I'll show that too. I just don't want to confuse people. So we'll start with the, the first half, which is going to be for the pressure in, uh, in the furnace. Let's see. So let's start with naming some of them. Uh, let's do logic reader pressure. We'll do memory uh, pressure set point. We do a uh, math sub. We, let's see. Let's do sub uh, pressure sub. And then we do pressure 
div for divide and then um, uh, mul for multiply and then these we don't bother with uh, we need to have these memories here we have one that's just going to have the value uh, let's see 100 so change the name to 100 and then the other one is just going to have the value negative one so this have the value negative one this have the value of 100 this will have the value of the pressure we want it to have so let's give it a value for now let's say uh, one megapascal and then we can start to set this up um, so obviously logic reader pressure probably not a huge surprise that this should read the furnish and then the pressure if I can find it pressure there we go and then uh, all of these uh, ships going up here are set up so that they kind of work from the previous ones so this guy which is which we call the pressure sub is going to do a subtract and it's going to read the previous two so it's going to read on uh, on the first one we'll read uh, logic memory pressure set point so logic uh, memory pressure set point and then the second input is the reader so logic mem let's see logic uh, reader pressure there we go so I can now turn this on let me turn this on as well is it zero in there I guess so so this will now give you some kind of number positive or negative depending on what the furnace is doing uh, currently the pressure is zero and the wanted pressure is a thousand, so it's going to say a thousand because it's only doing one minus the other. And it doesn't actually matter much uh, if you mix these up and like this one over there and that one over there, it will work out. Um, the next one is uh, like before, just going to go from the previous one and then this memory ship here. So we'll do. Uh, input on this one should then be the previous one which is logic math pressure sub so we find logic math pressure sub and then we want to divide and then we divide by 100 so we find the logic memory 100 so this has now just taken this value and divided it by 100 and that gives us 10 so here the order is obviously kind of important you can't do 100 divided by the memory it has to be uh, the, I mean the math unit it has to be the math unit divided by 100 so math unit on one the pressure sub and the memory on number two and then over here is of course again going to take uh, the previous one so this one pressure divide so we're going to read logic math pressure divide and then on the second input we are just grabbing that memory with minus one so logic memory minus one and of course we called it a multiply so it's going to multiply and this will show the exact same value as this except it's uh, inverted either from positive to negative or from negative to positive doesn't matter and then for our logic uh, writers we have two of them and so the one of them is going to read the this one showing the negative one the other should then show the positive one so any of these two so one for that one and one for that one doesn't matter which order but Let's do this one and do um, logic uh, math pressure multiply and that's this one so that's the negative one and now uh, 
let's see. And then we do the other one is logic math uh, divide. So that's the second one here. It's it's showing the positive value. And then which device these are going to output to? Uh, you will have to use your brain a little bit depending on how the setup uh, is looking at your end. But just think about it. Uh, my pressure in my furnace is now zero and I want a thousand. So which pump is going to get the positive value? Uh, and which pump is going to get the negative value? And I'll tell you it will be either the waste waste in or the waste out. This, these are the pumps controlling the pressure. So it's one of these two. And then you just use your brain. So this one is reading the negative value and my pressure is low. So this guy will have to write to the output one because it shouldn't be on at all. So we go to volume pump waste out. Yep. And then we go to setting and we can turn it on. So this is now putting negative 10 on the pump setting here on the waste out. But that's fine. The pump knows that this only means uh, to pump zero. So that's fine. This guy is then reading the positive value. So 10. And then uh, this guy will have to do the waste in pump. So we do, uh, let's see, that's the wrong pin. Uh, volume pump waste in, yeah and setting and we turn it on and this is now pumping 10 and you can see yeah the number is changing so this is now should be controlling the pressure in the, the furnace to 1 MPA yeah I think that looks pretty well He's doing a good job. Ooh, and one we have, yeah. Yeah, it's not perfect and it's not going to always be super fast, but it's gonna work. So, the next step is then to set up the exact same thing, but for the temperature. So, We'll place a logic, we need an IO, we'll do it the exact same. Uh, yeah, kind of close with the locker. Let's see. Locker gone. And uh, the memory was there, yeah. So, let's do the exact same thing. We need the, not the reader, we need the, uh, not the writer, we need the reader. So we have a logic reader and the memory. And <clears throat> then we do the exact same thing. We need to find the logic math. We need three of the math units. And then the two writer this time. And the smear. Let's see. And then we just cable it all the way up like we did before. And there we go, we have the second set of logic up and like we did before, we do the exact same thing except for temperature this time. So we have a logic reader temp, I'm just going to write temp, we have a temp set point and let's give that a value, let's say we want 1000 degrees in, one, in the furnace. 
And then we have our math unit, and this is temp sub. We have math unit temp div and math unit temp multiply. And then we do the exact same thing. We have a reader that reads the uh, furnace. Let's see, furnace. And of course, it should read temperature. So we find temperature. It's now 1697 degrees in the furnace. And then we go here. And this again should uh, read the two previous. So. This is logic memory temp setpoint and logic reader temp. So we do logic reader temp and logic memory temp setpoint. And then we do subtract. And it's currently saying 697. And because I did it in reverse order, it's positive. Doesn't matter. We're going to need both of them anyway. Uh, and then we do the next one, which is our divide. Here's the only one where the order matters. So we find logic math uh, temp sub. Yeah, that's this one. And then uh, on second input, we grab the logic memory 100 again. So we find logic memory 100. And then we do uh, divide. Right. Divide. So that's just the same value as here, divided by 100, pretty simple. And then, of course, we continue. This is uh, logic temp divide. So this guy needs to read logic math temp divide. And then on second input, just the negative one. So we do logic memory negative one. That's this guy. And we do uh, multiply. So that's the same value as before, except it's now a negative sign there as well. And again, two writers, that's going to read one with the negative and one with the positive. So we find uh, logic, math, uh, temp divide, and logic, math, temp multiply so that's reading divide that's reading multiply yep and then we need to figure out which pumps these are going to connect to and of course this time it's for temperature so it's going to be either the hot gas pump or the cold gas pump and if we look at our values let's start just with this one this one is reading temp divide and temp divide is currently a positive number and we have asked for a thousand degrees and it's currently a lot hotter than that so we need to cool down the furnace so which pump should get the uh, should have a positive number when we need to cool down well that's of course volume pump cooled the cooled need to have a positive number when we need to cool down. So I set the set that number to uh, the pump and it should be changing. Yep, there we go. And then the opposite uh, writer is then for volume pump heat. And we do, uh, let's see, setting and on. There we go. Now we should have a... Like I said, it's not terribly fast. It's not the perfect furnace. But it's gonna work for most uses. So this is pretty much it. There is nothing more logic to it. And if you're wondering what these things are called, it's called... We have essentially made a, a P controller. So that's the same P as in PID controller, but we have only made the proportional one. And that works uh, very well on setups like this. It's not going to be the fastest or most efficient, but 
it's easy to set up, it's easy to understand how it works, and it's gonna be good enough for most people. So, let's try to make something. Um, if we look up, uh, let's see, Constantin, for example, we need a temperature of 1000 Kelvin and a pressure of at least 20 MPa. So, let's set that. Let's see. Uh, we already have this to 1000. I'll just go a bit above that. So, let's say a temperature of 1000 and 1100 is probably fine. And then the pressure to 21 megapascal. And then this guy is gonna work on that. So if you hear some crackling noises, it's because the furnace, the regular furnace is kind of weird. And this cross section pipe, the four-way pipe here, it gets very pressurized before the furnace kind of catches up with it. So, but because it's inside a frame, it shouldn't blow up. So that's good. It's gonna perform even better on the advanced furnace when we get that. Um, but let's see, we have, uh, we need copper and nickel to make Constantin. So let's find the copper and nickel, nickel. And then let's toss that in. And we have Constantin. That's that simple to make it. So, before uh, we upgrade this setup to the advanced furnace, and it's probably a good idea to kind of empty it. So, let's just set the pressure to um, 20. KPA. The reason I'm not setting zero here is because if we actually empty the furnace completely, it will also read a temperature of zero, so the other pumps will start to kick in. Uh, we just don't want to lose all that gas, so let's empty it out first. And uh, we can start by clearing up some of these chutes. And open up the frame. So, well, that's working. Let's look around here. Oh, this is actually super hot now. 2300 degrees. How's this guy doing? Yeah, it's doing fine. And uh, yeah. Everything seems to be pretty good uh, over here. I'm just gonna save most of this gas here, so trying to empty it out. We can just turn the pumps off, uh, at least for cooling and heating. Um, for now. Uh, that's pretty perfect. Yes, that's probably good enough. Let's remove the cable and the furnace. So the advanced furnace is obviously going to go in right uh, there. And let's construct it and uh, put in some shoots for that as well. Uh, let's see a corner and an in. Is that the inlet? No, this is the inlet. So that's the outlet. Outlet. And then we do a corner. And 
inlet. And then, of course, we need to connect this with some cable. Here we go. And this pump over here, the waste out pump, is no longer necessary. So this pump can be removed. And of course I removed all the pipes, so I need another insulated pipe. Just pretend that that orange pipe is black, okay? <laughs> so that volume pump is no longer needed. Uh, other than that, we need to set the, let's see, which one is, this is input, yeah. We need to set the input pump to 100, and we can set the output pump to 0 for now. And we can just turn that on for the time being. Uh, let's see, I'm gonna close up the frame again. And we have a few blinking lights. We have one over there and two here. So let's fix those. Uh, these are obviously because we no longer have a furnace. So these are going to read the advanced furnace. And this is the pressure one. So of course we read pressure. We can turn that back on. And then we have this one. Uh, advanced furnace and uh, temperature there we go so this is now reading temperature and the one blinking over here is the one that did the output pump uh, previously now it's going to control this pump the pump directly on the furnace instead so let's turn it on it's going to read the exact same number so don't touch that and the output should be the advanced furnace and then I think there is like a setting output yep here we go and that's it now let's try to make something else let's see <clears throat> if we can make uh, I don't know what's uh, astroloy could probably make that 1100 degrees and 30 between 30 and 40 MPA so uh, let's see the temperature is already on 1100 that's fine and then we need 31 MPA Well, nothing is happening. Oh yeah, we because we turned off the pumps. I need to turn the pumps back on using a little bit of wall hacks. There we go. Well, that is working. Let me go and find what we need for astroloy. We need copper, steel and cobalt. Of course I picked the one with steel. Uh, so let me make steel first I guess. Let's, um, let's just spawn in some steel and what more was it? Uh, copper and cobalt. Copper and Cobalt. Yeah, I need to split this stack up. I'm not gonna do that. Uh, I'm gonna make steel instead. So iron and coal. Let's see. We need a hundred steel. So. There we go, we 
have 100 steel, 50 copper and 50 cobalt should make astroloy, right? So... Let's toss this in here. Steel, cobalt, here's the copper. And that should give us Astronoi. Perfect! There we have it. Pretty much. That's the setup. No codes used at all. And uh, yeah. Like I said, if you. It's not the absolute best. It's a very good furnace setup. But it's not always super fast and always super efficient. And if you come home with like. Uh, bunches and bunches of ores, then hopefully you have a good buffer built up. But for like the occasional alloys and stuff, then this is going to be very good. But anyways, I guess that's all as the sun sets on the horizon. So uh, I guess uh, thanks for watching and um, yeah.